What's up, Bill? I need two clutch connectors. Um, yeah, I think I got some. How many do you need? Seven. Seven? I think I got. Let's go check the truck. All right. Hey YouTubers, my name is Ed. I want to install some lights in the back of my pickup today so I can see what's inside of my cap for work. Now summertime is my favorite time of year. It's hot outside, which means that the days are longer. So the sun comes up earlier and sets a lot later in the day, which is great for me because I work in construction. So in the days when I go in early or I have to work late, well, it's always great to have that extra sunlight, especially when you have the cap on the back of your pickup truck, that extra daylight does help out. So I can find my tools and materials that I need to do my job. Unfortunately, when fall time comes, well, the days start getting shorter and you start losing that daylight. And uh, having the, the cap on the, on the back of your pickup truck, well, it starts getting dark in there too. I could bring a flashlight with me, but sometimes I need to have two hands to pull out the stuff that I need to do my job. I could wear my headlamp, which is on my hard hat, and well, with the low ceiling on there, well, sometimes it gets a little annoying. So today, I'm gonna put LED light strips inside my cap, as well as two 30-watt floodlights on the back top of my cap of the truck. This is a project I wanted to do for some time with the possibility of expanding onto it. All parts were given to me from HVAC technicians, steel workers, window framers, pump technicians, my technical school, and my last company closing up. The total cost of the project was $12. The cost of the LED light strips and the 30 watt LED floodlights were given to me as a gift. With the back of my truck mostly empty now, I have a good area in here to work in. So with this here is one of my toolboxes on the cap and it's supported by this rear and front support bar. And when I, I plan to hang my lights onto these one of these support bars. Now I have to consider all of my uh, obstructions which may damage the lights or hinder my installation. So right now these three benders are the problem right now to installing my lights because I don't want them to get into the way. The other toolbox here is mostly open. So whatever I do on this side, I'm gonna do on the other, on the other toolbox as well. Again, I'm just checking all my possible locations to mount my aluminum flat stocks so my LEDs will not become damaged after installation. I will get my measurements and cut my flat stock to size, install my LEDs and my marble beam clamps for mounting on the toolbox new strut channels.
used a quarter inch modelable beam clamp to support my lighting fixture here because I did not want to drill into the U-channel supporting the toolbox. Now this uh, support channel has to support a 200 pound toolbox with all the tools inside. Drilling into this may interfere with the integral structure of the toolbox mount, possibly making it weaker and possibly making the toolbox fall off the cap. So using the beam clamp, I used it and I squeezed it onto the U-channel, not, not too tight, and I used a 5 16 nut on here because with all that vibration, I did not want this beam clamp to become loose. Tightening the 5 16 nut up against the beam clamp will ensure that the thread apart holding the beam clamp onto the U-channel will not make it come off. All right, so now with my lights up, I'm going to use this electrical junction box for my switches, and I'm gonna mount it right on the side of the toolbox. So I'm gonna keep it up high just to make sure that nothing hits it, turns them on by accident, and I get a little more real estate. There's a fin right here that I'm gonna take and push outwards towards the edge of the cap, so I can get a little more room uh, for my box here. I'm gonna mount my box with quarter 20 hardware, and on the box I'm gonna use these uh, half inch Romex connectors for my wire coming in for power and for my wires going out for the lights. I got my switch box mounted, but in the meantime, I'm gonna hold off on the wiring just for now. So right now, I'm going to install two LED floodlights on the top of my truck. Now, the lights I have for this project are two 10 volt to 24 volt DC 30 watt LED floodlights. And these lights are gonna go right onto the top of the of my cab here, just like this. Now, these lights are pretty much just basic of the line, home use and stuff, which is perfect for me, because I wanna mount these lights temporarily on top of my truck, in case in the future, I wanna mount a ladder rack on top of my cab here. Now you may think to yourself, Ed, why not just put an LED strip bar across the top of your cab here? It might be low, low profile enough. Yes, that might be the case, but what if someone took the ladder off and they put it in the back of my truck and they're hitting my LED light bar and they damage it? And those light bars are pretty darn expensive. So my goal was actually to make these lights mount temporarily as I need them. Now the back of these lights have a basic bracket, which is okay, but they're very low profile, so I can't actually angle the lights downward as I want to. So I'm gonna to have to make up a custom mounting bracket for these lights. I'm using three quarter inch wide by one eighth inch thick flat steel stock to make my lighting brackets. Then I will drill out the base of the bracket with a 2564 inch drill bit right in the center. My lighting base mount is a 3 quarter inch steel tube with a 3 8 inch hole that I will cut to inch and a quarter long. I will drill that center out with a 25 64 inch drill bit because the stainless steel dowel that I will use for mounting on my vehicle will not fit inside the steel tube since both measurements are 3 8 7 inch.
To adhere the steel tubes to the bases, I'm using JB Weld Quick Set Epoxy for steel. Mix 1 to 1 ratio and place epoxy on the bottom of the lighting brackets. Place steel tubes over epoxy on lighting brackets and hold in place with a clamp and wait for full cure. I drill the ears of my bracket to mount my new LED floodlights. Paint the new bracket silver or your choice of color. Now that I have my lighting brackets set, here's one of the brackets that I made up for my lighting mounts. You see it does look pretty nice. This is the base for it, and this is actually going to sit on top of the cap. But this is not going to be sitting directly on top of the cap itself, since, since it's going to be a nut right below it. So this is just an idea of what the bracket's going to look like once it's all uh, finished and made up. The actual lighting mount, however, this is what the final product is going to look like once I mount my 30 watt light onto the lighting bracket itself. Now I drilled holes into my into my base and then I just use regular 1032 screws and nuts just to mount the the smaller base onto my new bracket that I just made up. So now I can mount this on my truck and I can swivel the light at my discretion to, ang to angle down as much as I want. I need to install the stainless steel dowels on the back end of my cap for my lights. I'm placing my LED floodlight in the area I desire for mounting, and then I take measurements for my dowel placement. I'll make a pilot hole followed by a 3 8 inch hole for my dowel to go into. Next I'll assemble the dowels with 3 8 stainless steel hardware, Place silicone under the washer so no water leaks into the cap. I finish off the installation of the dowel with a nut and washer inside the cap and tighten it all down with a 9 16 inch socket. Now I'm going to run the wires for my lights. On the inside of the cap, to power up my LED strips and the lights right above me, I'm going to run this 18-2 uh, cable tray wire. So it's just typical black and white, and this will be sufficient enough for me to power up the lights on the inside, and plus they don't draw a lot of power. To run the main wire to, to power everything up, I'm going to run this 14-2 SOOW rubber cord here. Now this cord is pretty heavy duty. It's got a heavy duty rubber jacket on it and it needs to weather the elements because I'm going to run this from the battery compartment underneath my truck, strap it to my frame, and over to my switch box for power. I ran my 14-2 wire down from the battery compartment to the passenger side of the frame. I'll run it through some mounts and tie it to the frame with some tie wraps. Once I reach the bed, I'll strap the wire to some anchor points and through a hole meant for a tie-down hooks through the bed and the wire will be left in the bed, coiled up and out of the way for now. The 18-2 cable tray wire is mounted using existing screws around the window frame with 12-2 MC straps. Now my wires can go into the switch box and ready for termination.
the 14 tool wires secured with half inch cowboys zip screw to the toolbox. My power now comes into my uh, switch box here to power up the LEDs. I brought my 18 2 cable tray wires into the box here for my LEDs and they go to these two toggle switches. One operates the interior LEDs and one operates the exterior LEDs and I have them wired into one end of my switch. On the other end of the switch here I have these wires uh, coming together for my positive power. So here we have our black wires which is our negative power, our ground, and we're going to splice all these wires together. With our positive wire, the white wire, we can now take our feed wire and splice it into the wires going into our switches. All we have to do now is put the cover on. Now let's connect our wires to the battery. My ground is this metal stud right next to the battery. I'm not going to loosen it up, but I will place my number 6 aluminum ground lug on this stud and mount it with a new 6mm nut. Dielectric grease will be added to my black wire going into the lug as well as on both 6mm nuts to prevent corrosion. To protect the circuit, I have this inline weatherproof auto fuse that will be installed next to the battery. With the fuse removed, I ran a number 12 white wire from the positive of my battery and crimped it to one of the red wires on the fuse. The other wire from the fuse is crimped to the number 14 wire of the rubber board. All wires here are given a coat of dielectric grease and heat shrink tube together. Now the last thing I gotta do is put connectors on my lights and wires. Now I like to thank a co-worker, his name is Cameron. He worked in solar for a while before he became an electrician and he recommended these connectors which are called photovoltaic uh, connectors that, uh, that they're called, or as I found on Amazon, they're called two-pin way wire connectors. They are weatherproof, and you probably see connectors like these on your vehicles, like for your headlights, blinker lights, parking lights, etc., etc., and stuff. So all they do is that they just plug together and make a nice weatherproof connection on there. Now these come in two-pin, three-pin, four, five, six-pin uh, uh, configurations, and you can use them for almost anything you want in a weatherproof application. I'm installing the male connectors on my LED floods and they will be spliced using small wire nuts. I do this in case the connectors, if they ever go bad, I can remove it without losing the wire on the flood light. Once the splice is made, I overlap heat shrink tube to the base of the connector and apply heat to bond it all together. Female connectors will be crimped to the cable tray wire for a permanent connection. For some reason, if the connectors ever do go bad and the tray wire is too short, I can always replace the wire. Once the splice is made, I heat shrink tube the assembly together. Let's put our fuse into the fuse holder and try out the LED lights. I arrived early at work in the morning and obviously it's kind of dark out. 
The interior lights are nice and bright. I can see everything inside the cap that I'm looking for. Each 30 watt LED floodlight is equivalent to one 150 watt halogen light. The lights light up the back of the truck like daylight. And even though it's not seen on the camera, the lighting extends far beyond than what you can see on the camera. The toolbox lights light up the toolboxes very well. One strip facing in gives us enough illumination to see all the miscellaneous items that I'm searching for. That yellow wire is my extension cord. I'm going to roll it out for my next bright idea. I'm removing one of my floodlights and I'm securing it to a 2 inch magnet with a toggle bolt. I need additional light in the area where I'm working at, so I place the light on a steel column and plug my extension cord into my light. This gives me the versatility to expand my usage of the lights in different work situations. I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time for watching the video. This was a fairly simple install to do, however the only challenging part that I saw was running power from the battery compartment back here to the truck cap. Now before I go, my friend decided to play a joke on me and he pulled the fuse out of my fuse holder and now this happens. Let me know what you think the problem is and write it down in the comment section below. I'll see everybody later.